This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, what's up? Today we are working on a walk-in cooler here. Got a little biohazard stuff inside there. It's all warm. Nothing major, just PPE stuff that uh, probably might be contaminated with. Anyhow, it's not wanting to run. Just popped this top off of it. Got a green sight glass. Motor looks oily. Coil, can't tell if it's really that dirty or not. We're gonna check and see what's causing it not to run. The evaporators are running down below. And uh, I'm kind of just wondering, do we have a fan? Yep, might have a fan out. High pressure switch trip. Uh, looking at that fan motor there, looks like it very likely could be bad. A couple, we had gauges on it. Ooh, look at that. That's not good. Holy mackerel. That's his ass gonna be snapped off. The fan came on, but I still have my lingering doubts on it. I'm gonna replace that fan motor. I'll let it run for a minute here. We'll see how that uh, condenser fan looks. Or condenser fan, yeah. Just the condenser coil looks. Let's test out our fan control there. We'll shut that off by pushing down on that. And when it kicks on, we're going to hold this and see how much starting torque this thing has. Also going to see where it kicks on at. 150. That's quite a... There, it's coming on. I mean, it's got pretty good starting torque. Makes me think the motor's not really that bad. Unless it's got a bad spot. Let's see where she trips out at here. Maybe it's falsing too early. About 215-ish area. Not very high. It's double what it's running, but coil seems a little dirty too. Well, at least it feels warm. The receiver is definitely warm. I'm thinking what we need to do is replace the motor, wash the coil, adjust that pressure switch it's pretty pretty clean i mean it's got some restriction in there for sure but i'm gonna wash that out and then see if we can get numbers off that motor adjust that up it's a little higher on the uh, pressure trip and uh see where we're at this thing just came back on i don't understand how that clicked if it's auto reset makes no sense. I wonder if we got a pressure switch malfunction. We can reset one time but not the next. It's kind of weird. Come over here. This is where we're working at. So it is getting cooler in here already. A little bit of a rattle trap. I'm going to wash this out too. Coils look a little dirty. That wouldn't cause anything to trip out. I'm gonna try to make this thing run as best as possible. See if we make this fan shut off here when it gets cold. Yeah, there we go. I think it's starting to shut down. Our head pressure looks like it came down a little bit. Looks a little better than it did. We added a piece of split tubing here. I took a regular poly tubing and a quarter inch, split it with a razor knife, slid it on there. That's what we've done here in the past keeps these things from vibrating and breaking off and it also protects them from rubbing into things. Works really well. I uh, got the numbers off the motor. The evaporator's clean. What I think I'm going to do, get that motor ordered, get a new one. I'll put some oil in it for now to keep it going. But I have my lingering doubts about that pressure control. Why did it reset one time and not the next? So I'm really thinking it may not be a bad idea to replace it too. You can see that button there, how much it vibrates. It's not looking very good. But we're gonna go ahead and replace this build pressure switch. Uh, I talked to the guy in charge, he okayed it. So we're gonna go and pump her down. We'll get that switch replaced and we're gonna order that motor. It's uh, Both of them are pretty worn. The whole unit's old. I mean, it used to be, or might still be R12 is what it looks like. Now when it does pump down, 
liquid line will stop here and it'll go blank as you can see but this here will have pressure on it we've got it pumped down here at the receiver now we're going to valve off the suction and discharge lines at the compressor that will isolate just the compressor from the rest of the circuitry you figure the pressure is from the discharge to the receiver is still live so when we valve that off it's going to have just a little bit in the piston area but then we'll be fine after that go ahead and take this off or we'll reuse it no sense of splitting it all over again it is a pain in the butt to split that stuff but make it a little easier So we've got our loom on there. All of our lines are away from anything sharp. They're bent. So it comes down, up. It's wire tied there. Comes across. Got relief bends here. Everything should be fine. Got that new piece there. So should be able to let her roll again and get the power turned back on. Yeah, make sure you use the nylog on the flare fittings. That way it lubricates the front and back of the flare and it turns right without scalding the, or galding the copper. Now we should be able to open up our suction and now we got to do a test to make sure our cutout is set correctly. I've got it set somewhere in the 20 to 25 range with a 15 to 20 degree or 15 to 20 PSI differential. So we'll uh, We'll do that here in a second. Make sure we get our discharge open back up, otherwise you'll have a bad day. Okay, fan comes back on. Got a rattle trap going on. So I don't know where my suction gauge went. I think I lost it. Of course, nobody ever turns anything back into you. So we're gonna go ahead and just valve off the suction. Let's see where, let's see, yeah, it should, it should work out just fine. So valve this off, let's see where she cuts out at. It's still about the same resolution as half of the 410A gauge sets out there, so it'll work fine. Not so good. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and adjust that a little bit. I might have to go grab my other gauge. Should work. The valve it off there. That should pull down on that one there. Hopefully I hooked the right ones up. I think I did. Yeah, I'm almost positive I did. Oh, you know, I think I did do it wrong. Ah, yep, I made a mistake. I was visually thinking left side suction. It's not. So we had to put our cap back on there, otherwise we'd be obviously getting squirted. So we're gonna pump her back down, do exactly what we just did, and we'll switch those two around. I made a mistake, it happens. Got that corrected. Let's go ahead and open this liquid back up. Make sure she comes on. Not right in there. Okay. Freaking rattle trap. Alright, so let's look at a PT chart here, see what 12 would be for kick on uh, in cold weather. I'm gonna go with our coldest outdoor temperature. Forgot how low 12 runs. Holy cow. So we're gonna adjust this thing somewhere along the 10, 15 inch range for cut in. When you get that low, you start getting into the area where your degrees is your pressure. It's pretty much corresponding together. So let's see how that comes in there. Let's valve that thing off on the suction side, watch her go down. Come on. Yeah, that's not working real good. Yeah, that's way too low. Yeah, we're gonna have to switch that differential a little bit. Listen her back up. About 15-ish. We got the valve still partially open, so we're coming on about 15. And let's see where we shut off at. Yeah, that don't like that. We're gonna have to do it off the liquid side. Yeah, it's a little bit screwy there. There we go. Pulling the pump down here, eventually. Depending on how these valves hold or not, we'll make rapid cycle, so we gotta watch for it. Yeah, cut out. Nope, still going. Yeah, I don't like it going down that low, so let's just raise the cut in a little bit there. Let's see how that does. We'll just crack this a little bit. On. About 15. Bow her back off. There we go. Kevin Compass from uh, Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. He says he likes to do it with the nitrogen tank or whatever at the or refrigerant tank uh, and uses gauges back of the truck. And I can see how that would definitely make it a lot easier. Um, as you can see, it's not holding real wonderful because the valves probably didn't or either aren't holding or we're leaking a little through or we still had enough refrigerant in the system and it doesn't want to come you know go completely down let's go ahead and kick it one more time we may have to tweak it just a little bit and run a little lower than we want because i don't want this to rapid cycle so 15 valve it off yeah it's about a two not quite where i want Let's go ahead and do the differential this time. Just a little bit of a spring turn there. See how that goes. We're gonna have to get real close to zero. Otherwise, she's gonna rapid cycle back and forth. It's been forever since I've done an R12 style system, so I don't remember exactly where we normally set it at. I know the box is gonna be in the 30s, outdoor temperature. Although it's pumped down, it's still going to sense off the temperature of the evaporator. So in theory, it really don't matter what the outdoor temperature is, but it can. So it's just one of those things where you got to balance it all. There's one, two pounds, and she's going to hold under 10. That's why a lot of people sometimes run over and they will run into a negative a little bit because they know it's going to come back up, but it still don't make it right because if you lose the refrigerant, gonna just keep on going and going and going 
the degrees are cut in just a touch more. I think it'll be about 15-ish degrees. I don't, you know, honestly, I think we're gonna leave it alone. Let's leave it there, see how it does. So, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and order a new motor for that condenser. Uh, we got the new switch on there, the high pressure. We probably could uh, test that, make sure it cuts out. And then uh, just get those things ordered and we'll come back. Okay, they set it about 300 area. I don't know if that's quite where I want to be at, but there's a 225 before. We may adjust that just a touch. There we go. I cranked it in until I hit where I wanted to hit at. So we did hit. I don't think we're ever going to hit that high any other time. So good enough for that. That will protect us there. Let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Hit the reset once it drops down low enough and we should be good to go. Now what I'm going to do, because that motor's probably going bad and maybe it worked one time, maybe it won't the next. God dang it. They, they sure put this crap in there where you can't hardly get to anything. Let's go ahead and get this thing valved off and then pump it back into the system here. There we go. And hit the button. We're going to go ahead and stick, uh, screw that down so that it's actually auto resetting until we get back. I don't want to have to worry about that while we're gone. And it's the weekend, so it's going to be at least a few days to get it. All right, so we got it cranked in. We'll go ahead and get our date on here. And then we'll redo that when we come back. Uh, but yeah, one wire tie there. We are good to go. Before we trash it, I wanted to check and see what my pressure was before, and it was 15, 17-ish area, which is exactly where we're at now. So, if it worked before, it should work again. Just gonna oil up that motor, and then uh, get her done. All right, box hit temperature. Got the door open, grab a hold of the bulb. Let's go back up there and oil that motor. And we're out of here. All right, so give the old zoom spout, see if that helps give me some extra time just in case, but that's gonna wrap this one up. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, check me out on Instagram, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.